my faith and not my sight, no gracious words I hear of him who spoke as none has spoke, what we believe him here. We may not touch his hands and side, or fall away. And cry, my Lord and God. Help then, O oh Lord, our unbelief, and may our faith abound to call on you when you are near and seek where you are. In the name of the, the Father, Father, the Son, and the, Son, and the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. My brothers and sisters in Christ, in today's gospel, we hear the risen Lord's first words to St. Thomas. Peace be with you. Let us acknowledge our sins and moments of doubt, knowing that our Lord desires to grant us his peace. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, God in the highest, and on and earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with, with the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit in, in the, the glory of God, God the Father. Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast, kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the Apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke, broke bread in various houses and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Is 
has triumphed his right hand raised me I shall not die I shall live and recount his deeds this is the day the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad this is the day the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. A birth into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. It was evening on the day Jesus rose from the dead, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. After eight days, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. A few years back, I was visiting the elementary school that I attended for 10 years. Aside from everything appearing somewhat smaller than I remember it, everything looked pretty much the same, with one exception. There was a corner of the schoolyard 
a grassy area that we used to play in, which was paved over to make room for more parking spaces. What was once a well-worn area of patchy grass was now a perfectly smooth layer of black asphalt with painted bright yellow lines. As I reminisced about playing in this area, I couldn't help but think about how deadly the parking lot looked. No more kids playing there, no more grass growing, no more inviting space, no more life. But as I approached the center of the parking lot, there growing up right through the smallest of cracks in the pavement was a wildflower, blowing in the breeze, somewhat frail, but proud as could be, reaching up to the sun. I was so amazed at the sight, I couldn't believe it. Somehow it had managed to survive being crushed by the many cars. Somehow it had managed to survive the plague of the asphalt. The crack that it was growing out of was barely, was barely visible. I'm sure you have seen these types of growths, wildflowers growing from stone walls or through the cracks of sidewalks, growing from outposts that have no business sustaining even the remotest signs of life. In that moment in the parking lot, I saw that this was a wonderful sign of life conquering and outlasting death. No matter how final death seems, no matter how hopeless it seems, it seems death does not have the final say. This is true for all of us. We are all sons and daughters of the resurrection. For the disciples, the betrayal, trial, and brutal crucifixion of Jesus was so real and so final. There is a detail that reveals how true this is and, how, and was. Even though some called for the death of Jesus, the Jewish authorities didn't want this scene visible during the Passover, which was taking place that weekend. So Pilate, Pontius Pilate allows them a concession to speed up the death of the criminals so they can be removed. He gives the order to break their legs. This speeds up the process. Those being crucified need their legs to push their bodies up. Doing so allows them to breathe. Breaking their tired and twitching legs speeds up the process of asphyxiation. No legs to stand on means no more breathing. When they get to Jesus, they see that he is already dead. So they don't break his legs, they spear him in the side. This little detail gives evidence that he was truly brutalized and died before they had anticipated. So when Thomas is unable to believe that Jesus is alive, he is simply being logical and reasonable. It's as if the brutal reality of his death is like the school parking lot, totally covering over his hope and his faith, permanent. One of the things that strikes me in all the accounts of the resurrection is that none of the disciples recognize the risen Jesus. They look at him but can't believe that it is really him. They all saw him there, lifeless on the cross. How could he be standing here, right in front of us? How is it possible, they would have asked. The resurrection is an act of God. It is not something that we humans can easily explain or understand. The reason is that it shatters all of our categories and horizons of human expectations. Dead people don't come back from that. They stay dead. It's true that we don't know how it is possible that he rose from the dead. What we do know is that nothing is impossible for God. For God, all things are possible. And from this moment of the resurrection, God begins to write a new narrative, that he is present in life's most trying times, that suffering is not for nothing and can carry meaning, it can be redemptive, and that there is life after death. Each one of the apostles that witnessed the resurrection of Christ is first stunned and stupefied. But after this witness, each one of them is willing to die to proclaim this good news, that Christ is risen from the dead. For St. Thomas, seeing the risen Christ is not like a wildflower, but like an oak tree of faith come up through the asphalt of his doubt. He is the first to acknowledge Jesus as my Lord and my God. He is the first to recognize Jesus as equal to God the Father. How is this possible? Jesus and the Father are two and yet one. How is this possible? 
Well, we don't know how it's possible, but not knowing how doesn't deny the truth of the reality. What we do know is that for the disciples, where there was once fear and denial and betrayal, there is now hope, courage, and wonder. Death has touched each of our lives, death of a loved one, death of true life and joy within our hearts. If Jesus has risen, that means that the power of death does not have the final say over any aspect of life. New life will come to our loved ones. New life will spring up in our hearts. God is the God of new life and resurrection. But we must first pass through our crucifixions and our sufferings to receive new life in the resurrection. Just when you think there is no more hope, all God needs is a crack. Sometimes you won't be able to see it, but beneath the surface, beyond what you can see, the seed of new life is germinating. Give it time, allow for a crack, and in time it will flower. It will happen in a particular way according to your situation and to your circumstances. Be patient and trust in the Lord. Our sign of hope is a dead man on the cross. Where the world sees folly and defeat, we who know the rest of the story know that he didn't stay dead. He rose from the dead. From this reality comes our redemption and our hope. Let us now stand and profess the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We rejoice on this holy Easter season. We call upon the Lord to hear and answer the prayers of your people for the church and for the world. For our Holy Father, the Pope, our Bishop and all bishops, priests and deacons, for all with a special ministry in the church and for all God's people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the church's fidelity in bearing witness to Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the newly baptized at Easter and for all who are baptized in Christ, that God in his mercy continue to give them life in Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and the infirm separated from their parish communities and all those who join us today, that this mass celebrated for them will bring comfort and joy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us take a few moments and offer our own petitions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Almighty and eternal God, your spirit guides the church. Listen to our prayers and help each one of us to live our lives doing your work more faithfully. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Having listened to God's word, let us celebrate his supper with joy and thanksgiving. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me from my sins. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord, May the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice, sacrifice at your hands, hands for the, the praise and the glory of his name, name for our good, good and good, good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, 
and of those who have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them up, up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as they acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith when, when we, we eat this bread and drink, and drink this, this cup, cup we, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also your bro our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us pause and consider someone in our lives whom we need to forgive or be forgiven by, and may the Holy Eucharist give us the strength to do it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Amen. Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Alleluia. alleluia. Good morning and thank you for celebrating with us on this Sunday morning. A special word of thanks to Father Frank Portelli. Father Frank is the director of the Office of Catholic Youth for the Archdiocese. When I say Catholic Youth, he ministers to people, young people and young adults between the ages of 18 and 35. If you're interested in many of the exciting activities they have, you can check the diocesan website or call the Archdiocese. I want to thank you as well for your many letters of encouragement and your financial support that makes the Mass possible. We're now in our 30th year of being with you on Sunday mornings. Until next Sunday at this time, God bless and have a happy, happy week. Show them the